Don't blame the butter for what the bread did. Fat only makes you fat when paired with carbohydrates. Truth or myth? And we're going to cover the truths and the myths. Fats are not the bad guy. Wait, a darn minute. So you mean to tell me fats are not the bad guys? That they are merely accomplices or the subject of peer pressure? Yep. Chances are you've been wrong about fat your entire life. Kind of like the one guy in high school who was too weird to be friends with, but now owns a Fortune 500 company. See, for years, decades even, we've been fed with misinformation. By who? The food industry. To illustrate, a great example would be to say people that are born have a 100% chance of dying. We know that we all have to die, but being born is not the direct cause of it. That sums up the similar assumptions made on fat. Interestingly, fat began to get a bad rap sheet the same time the introduction of readily available carbs appeared, thanks again to the food industry. Think breakfast cereals and snacks. At this time, cases of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, a range of metabolic disorders, and obesity began to spike. Yes, in fact, by appro uh, approaching studies involving fats with a biased eye, the verdict was met before a fair trial. So what is the truth? You on and find out for yourself. Stop the video and review this uh, chart with the different types of fats. Insulin calls the shots behind the scenes. When we ingest foods, be, be it fats, carbs, or protein, the molecules containing them do not magically turn into fat or new cells or whatever. They must be shuttled to their final destination. This conductor is insulin. Under normal circuits, by normal we mean occasional stimulation, insulin is the prodigal hormone. It is important for ensuring nutrients get where it has to go so that cells and subsequent organs function as they should. However, Following the introduction and subsequent consumption of carb-heavy foods, insulin started working overtime, hoarding nutrients into cells, more particularly fat cells. As these fat cells grew and insulin lost sensitivity, a dangerous cocktail of elevated blood sugar and fat levels resulted, setting the stage for diabetes and high cholesterol. Carbs, insulin, fat. Think about that. Fat does not like to be stored. You may or may not know insulin by its true name, the storage hormone, as its primary role is, the, is that defined. However, fat had different things in mind. Research has shown that our ancestors were very lean and healthy, all thanks to a primary fat metabolism. So why did they die? Well, they died because there was no penicillin. They died because there was nothing for uh, migraine headaches. They died because there was nothing for diabetes or sugars or, or uh, cholesterol. There was no medicine out there. So that's why they died young. Also, they didn't have the food available to them that we have. Their diets consisted mainly of wild animals with the occasional forage consumed too, such as berries. The result was a metabolism that used fats for fuel, the way we were meant to function, but altered via means of mass-produced cheap carbohydrates, again, by who? The food industry. Under the influence of insulin, however, fats are powerless to be burned directly as fuel and will only be called upon in cases when sugars are low. It is then, or when following a canogenic diet, Low-carb eating that results in ketosis where the body uses fat for energy instead of dietary carbs. That the true beauty of using fat as a primary fuel is revealed. And not only revealed, but it's how you're going to burn the fat. By using the fat that's in your body, by not produ introducing new carbohydrates to be consumed first. Insulin, the fat maker. Insulin is the energy of fat storage hormone. Anabolic lipogenic. Insulin tells the body to store glucose in the muscles and liver for energy. Store the rest as fat. 
transports amino acids into muscle cells, blood muscle cells to build and repair. Fiber and fat in food slow the release of insulin. Let's read that again. Fiber and fat in food slow the release of insulin. So fiber, which is vegetables, and fat, which is the good fat that you consume, slow the release of insulin. And this is the magic formula. Fats do not stimulate insulin release. Fact. You can literally eat a whole cow and not experience a surge of insulin, causing your body to begin oxidizing the fat directly for fuel. However, the typical idea of a meal includes both carbohydrate and fat, resulting in storage of both in cells until needed if ever. Without the influence of carbs and associated insulin spikes, fats are easily burned off and not stored in fat cells. Let's read that again. Without the influence of carbs and associated insulin spikes, fats are easily burned off and not stored in fat cells. So the idea is you consume good fats and they're burned off. And then they start to burn the fat that's stored in your body. Conclusion. Truth. Fat is not bad for you by itself, rather only when under insulin's grasp. And even more revealing is the fact that ketogenic diet, one high in protein and fats, but extremely low in carbs, promotes weight loss and leads to improved health far and over the approved diets of the world's governments. You know, like the American pyramid, the food pyramid, which has, the, over the last 50 years, has caused America and the world to become fat. Hmm. A deliberate ploy to enrich pharmaceutical companies? Hmm. We hope not. Who's making money on all this diabetes medicine and all this cholesterol medicine and this high blood pressure medicine? But the pharmaceutical companies. And who's profiting so greatly from cheap foods that are full of carbohydrates? The food industry. The many studies that have shown low-carb diets to be more effective in actual pounds loss and reducing cholesterol levels than low-fat diets support the theory that the low-carb is the most effective for weight loss and burning body fat. Of course, you can also ask the thousands of people, many of whom were obese, who have successfully lost weight and kept it off with a low carbon diet if you're not convinced. Now, let's drop that word diet and call it a low carb lifestyle, a way of living to not only lose the weight but keep it off. As in this photo, let's bust out of this fat body and get down to the lean muscle mass. And one of the ways to do that is to take advantage of the special canogenic diet plan that we're offering for only $19.95. Click the link in the description box to get your copy today. And we wish you good health. Lose that fat because young or old, you can lose the weight. You don't have to stay fat for the rest of your life. And your goal should be to die young at a very old age. Bye-bye.